All right then, so let's continue with the lecture. So the next topic is on ratio and pass transistor logic. Okay, so... Um, okay, so uh, what makes a circuit fast? Um, so, so actually before we go through this, um, there's a small note that um, uh, ratio and pass transistor logic is actually uh, as far as i know it's not so commonly used today um so so most common is the static cmos that we have looked at in the previous lecture uh so so for this topic we are going to go um uh, not, not really so much in detail because it's not uh, it's not the mainstream uh, uh cmos uh, logic uh, structure that is that is currently being used so um, pass transistor has some application to it, um, but ratio, as far as I know, um, it's not really used. So, but, but it's in our syllabus, and it's nice to know uh, what people are doing or what people have done uh, to overcome some of the issues in the in the static CMOS. Okay, um, but in the end, static CMOS still is the uh, is still the king in 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 the CMOS structure. Okay, so um, let's have a look at this. So, what makes the circuit fast? Um, so the, the circuit is fast if uh, it, it, it's a high current right it, it's all about how fast you can charge your uh, load capacitance on the output node so so your i here is actually depends on your c db dt okay according to this equation so the fast circuit what does it need it needs a, a low capacitance okay low cl high current which means uh, low resistance and a small voltage swing uh, a small vdd um, but of course, there's a trade-off between these three. Um, but but here, PMOS are the enemy. High capacitance for a given current. Um, can we take the PMOS capacitance of the input? So that that's the issue here. Um, can we just use NMOS and not use PMOS or reduce the number of PMOS? Uh, so for that, they come up with the um, the circuit structure called the ratio logic. So so in the in the ratio logic, um, basically the goal down here is to reduce the number of device over the static complementary CMOS okay um, so, so as we know uh, in, in, in static CMOS if you have a, a two input NAND let's say NAND uh, two input um, corresponds to uh, two NMOS and two PMOS so four transistors four transistors so basically you can say N input N input to N uh, tran transistors okay um, so can, can we do better? Uh, can we have an input but less than uh, two n transistors? So, so here in 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 a ratio logic, uh, we we can have uh, here they, they show three types of uh, ratio logic uh, structure: the resistive load, the depletion load, and MOS, and the pseudo and MOS. So resistive load is just a resistor. Okay, so they totally remove your P MOS. Uh, the N MOS is still there. Okay, so N, N MOS is still uh, down there. Uh, using just like the, the, the static complementary CMOS, uh, it's just that the PMOS, uh, complementary NMOS, just that the PMOS is, is removed and replaced with just a resistor. Uh, depletion load is where you connect your gate and the drain. Um, uh, okay, this is the NMOS. So you connect the, the gate and the source of the, of the NMOS. Okay. And, and basically you will have a, a, a sort of like a constant current uh, going through and then you can have a PMOS load this is this is uh, your, your PMOS okay your PMOS is connected to ground or VSS so this, this one is always on okay so remember if you put zero in your at, at the gate of the of the PMOS then the transistor is on and it's going to be always on and and what, what happened here is, is, is basically um, you will have a, a, a current always okay always always on always on okay here is here is also always on so even even if it tries to pull down even if the the pdn input tries to pull down uh, the node f but the vdd will still try to charge your cl okay so what what's the impact on that one um what's the impact is 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 actually uh, your static power is mentioned there okay uh, but let's let's have a look at the resistive load. So resistive load, you have n transistors for n input, plus the load, okay, the resistor, 
VOH equals to VDD, so you're going to charge full. Okay, so let's say this is off. Okay, so if your NMOS is off, then you are going to charge full uh, F equals to VDD. Okay, VOL, so uh, VOL is, is not going to be uh, zero. It's not going to be zero. So um, in, in, the case, in the case that this one is on, it's going to discharge. Um, but at the same time, you also have a charging. So you can see here, you have a charge and discharge at the same time, and that is called static power. Okay. Um, and the response is, is, is not symmetrical, okay, um, because you have a fixed uh, resistor there, uh, which is a fixed current, and then the, the PDN is uh, the, the speed or, or the, the, yeah, I mean, the, the, the rate at which you discharge actually depends on your input patterns. Uh, so you have an asymmetrical response and your propagation delay uh, for low to high is 0.69 RLCL. Okay, this one is for charging. charging. Okay. So you can also have a depletion load and a PMOS load. Uh, so depletion load where you connect this together and then uh, you, you connect the, the gate to the ground. But always, um, uh, is, is, is always on... Uh, pull up okay on the, on the pull up network is always on so so again if you can imagine um, the pull up is always trying to pull up even if the pull down is trying to pull down so then you have a pull up and pull down at the same time and and therefore you're going to have a static current uh, going from VDD to the ground okay so load line I think I'm going to skip the load line Okay, let's look at the example of the pseudo NMOS uh, NOR gate. Okay, so um, so th this is this is uh, basically based on the on the on the PMOS load. So so here is a here is a PMOS load. So PMOS load uh, type um, uh, ratio logic is called a pseudo NMOS. You can also have a pseudo PMOS where where your your pull down is 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 given by one NMOS. But here, for example, you have a you have a pseudo NMOS. So for the for the PMOS load here, uh, again if you see you have a zero there, okay, you have a zero there, so it's always on. Um, VOH VDD, okay, same as a CMOS, but maybe a little bit faster probably um, than the the complementary CMOS. Uh, small area, okay, because the number of transistors is much less. Um, for static CMOS you have eight, and now you have only five, okay. You will you reduce um, three more transistors. But static power is high. Okay, static power is high as I mentioned. It's going to um, there's a direct pass from VDD to ground. Okay, what about sizing of your of your your pseudo um, your your PMOS load? Okay, um, what 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 should be the size of your of your PMOS? That's that's, that's what I'm trying to say here. That uh, if you make the size big, okay, W W over L P equals to four. Uh, if you make it your size big, then you're going to have a high current all the time. So remember, the current is constant. You can say it's a constant and always on. And what, what happens if you have a high current and low current? So if you have a high current charging, um, even when it's trying to discharge, even when it's trying to discharge, uh, it's going to discharge a little bit slow. Okay, because uh, you have a high current trying to charge, at the same time you are discharging. Um, so the discharging happens a little bit slow, and that's why you have a slow transition on your V out, uh, against V in. However, if you put your WL small, okay, WL small, you have a small current, smaller current, so then you can, you can discharge faster. But notice here that your, uh, your noise margins are all uh, not, not, not quite symmetrical. Okay, not quite symmetrical, and the speed... It's also the speed issue as well, um, depending on the size. Okay, so, so pseudo NMOS draws power whenever output is zero, where you have a static power IDD, I, I, IDD VDD. Uh, a few microamper gate times one million gates would be a problem. Use um, pseudo NMOS apparently for wide NOR. Turn off PMOS uh, when not in use. So uh, this is one solution where you can say that uh, if if the logic gate is not in use, then we can switch it off using some enable. So this is a, a sort of like a dynamic, sort of like a dynamic um, uh, CMOS. Okay, later we'll see. But the dynamic CMOS idea is, uh, you, um, 
to avoid static power, you want to uh, switch off, try to switch off completely uh, the, the the load. Okay, the load. And this is what it's trying to do here in DC VSL. It's a bit different than the dynamic one we'll see later. But uh, what happened in DC DC VSL is um, the differential cascode voltage switch logic. Uh, okay, so 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 basically, it's a complementary. Um, so if if this is on, then this is off. Okay, so on means we are trying to pull down. So let, let, let's say we're trying to pull down. So it's on, um, and we're trying to pull down. So here is 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 off. So is there is a duality. So um, if, if if this is trying to pull down, then then out is zero. Out is zero, and and out bar is going to be equals to one. Okay. So if 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 out is zero, uh, then this one is on, and it's going to. Um, charge completely your out that's why that's why your out is equals to one okay so so if out equals to one this one is going to be off okay this one's going to be off then you can see that that um, there is no contention okay <coughs> there is no contention on the node out um, where um, id here equals to zero okay so it's completely going to pull down uh, no static power and um, in this case uh, uh, this one is completely off Okay, you, let's assume it's completely off for now. Um, so if it's completely off, <coughs> then uh, your VDD will try to charge your node out bar all the way to VDD. Okay, and, and, and there's no contention, there's no static power, um, means that um, your, your, your load is not on all the time. Okay, so that's the idea to overcome the, the standard pseudo and MOS uh, logic. Okay, so this is an example here. I think you can go. I'm going to skip this. Um, I, th I think just to understand the concept, uh, why people come up with pseudo and MOS, and uh, what what are the issues uh, in the first version of the pseudo and MOS, and then how they come up with the DCVSL to overcome uh, the issues in the in the pseudo and MOS. Okay, um, transient response. Uh, I'm going to skip this. Okay, and now we go to the uh, pass transistor. Okay, um, okay. So for the pass transistor, we go. We'll, we'll talk about this in the next video.